Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So today we're going to continue our basic anatomy review and I left you at the end of the stomach so we're going to continue with the small intestine and the large intestine basic anatomy for step one and other medical exams. As you see in this picture we have the duodenum. The duodenum is divided into four parts. The first part which is the superior one as you see here. The second part which is the inferior one. The third part, which is the transverse one, and the fourth part, which is the ascending one. Now we have to know the uh, the relation of the of each part to the major structures. For example, one of them will be the head, the pancreatic head. Very clear in this picture. The first part is superior to the head. The second part is to the right of the head. Third part is inferior, and the fourth part, the ascending one, is to the left of the pancreatic head and inferior actually to the head and inferior to the uh, body next thing I want to highlight here is this relation you see this is the superior mesenteric vessels this is the superior mesenteric artery and this is the superior mesenteric vein you see their relation to the third part of the duodenum and how they arch over the uh, this part of the duodenum now this relation is important because we have a syndrome called superior mesenteric syndrome, superior mesenteric artery syndrome. What the, what happens here is that what happens here is that the superior mesenteric artery sometimes it uh, uh, it compresses the structures underneath it, and as you see here, this structure is the third part of the duodenum. So the superior mesenteric artery can compress the 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 duodenum. The duodenum and this compression will lead to a lot of symptoms, actually a lot of obstructive symptoms and vomiting. So uh, it's important to remember the uh, so it's important to remember the relation of this part to the artery, because superior mesenteric syndrome is it's not common, but uh, it can you can be asked about this so that you link between clinical and basic science. Now we see this superior mesenteric artery syndrome in uh, situations or in patients where we have low mesenteric fat. For example, in uh, very low weight uh, people or in people who have recently lost uh, a lot of weight. Other thing I want to emphasize here is the relation to the gallbladder. As you see, this is the gallbladder and this is the duodenum. So the gallbladder is anterior to the duodenum. And inside the C-shaped structure, we have the pancreatic head, as you see here. Now, let's talk about the blood supply of the duodenum. The blood supply of the duodenum is given by two major arteries, superior pancreatic duodenal and inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. Now, the superior pancreatic duodenal artery takes origin from the gastro duodenal artery. This is the gastro duodenal. On the other hand, the inferior pancreatic duodenal takes origin from this vessel, which is the superior mesenteric artery. Other thing I want to emphasize is the lymph node drainage of the duodenum. So if you had like any tumor or any infection and it, it drained by the lymphatic to the nearby lymph node from the duodenum. So you should look for, for this drainage in the celiac and in the superior mesenteric artery lymph node. Now, I, I want to put like a certain and general rule here. The lymph node drainage usually follows the blood supply. For example, in this case, you see the superior, the superior pancreatic duodenal, it takes origin from the celiac trunk. This is the celiac trunk. So, usually around the major vessels, you have lymph nodes and the na their name follow the name of the artery. So, we have celiac uh, lymph nodes and uh, duodenum, superior part of the duodenum drains into celiac lymph node. Inferior part of the duodenum drains into superior mesenteric artery lymph node because it's supplied by this. Now, this is not an absolute rule, but you can, it can help you, especially if you're stuck and you forgot the lymph node drainage in the middle of the exam, you can use this rule. Another thing to point out is the retroperitoneal versus intraperitoneal. Now the duodenum is somewhat uh, w weird because the first two centimeters of the duodenum are uh, intraperitoneal. The rest of the duodenum is retroperitoneal. So the duodenum by itself mostly it's retroperitoneal organ, but you have to remember that the first two centimeters, or some people say the first part, 
which is this part the first part of the duodenum is uh, is in, is intraperitoneal now i will explain uh, the difference between retroperitoneal and intraperitoneal and their importance and their examples because it's very high yield concept to remember for you as you see in this picture we have this ligament this is called the suspensory ligament of treatis now why it's good to know this uh, ligament and its uh, its location as you see it's between the fourth part of duodenum or duodenal jejunal flexure and diaphragm this is the crust of the diaphragm the right one so the duodenum is connected to the diaphragm by the ligament of treatis superior to this ligament of treatis or proximal to it any bleeding from this side proximal to the or sub proximal or superior to this ligament is called upper gi bleeding below this ligament any bleeding is called lower gi bleeding so you see this uh, big concept of upper versus lower gi bleeding in, in surgery especially it's based on this ligament so uh, it's just an anatomical association between okay next part is the small intestine which is the jejunal the jejunum and the ileum this is the small intestine as you see here this is the most occupies the major part of the abdomen the first two-fifths of the small intestine is called the jejunum the rest of it, which is the 3 out of 5 of the small intestine, is called ileum. Not very high yield for you to know. More important to know the blood supply, the lymph node drainage, and the, uh, the, the differences, how to differentiate on imaging or in histology between jejunum and ileum. Of course, there is differences in function, but uh, this is not a physiology lecture, so you can return to the... I, I can highlight some of the, some of the important differences. But this is not a physiology, so I will not focus on the function of the jejunum and the ileum. Okay. Blood supply of the small intestine, we've already reviewed it if you've, uh, if you've watched the previous videos in the major results video. We said that superior mesenteric artery supplies the jejunum and the ileum, and it also supplies the cecum, and it supplies the ascending part of colon, and it also supplies the pro uh, proximal two-third of the transverse colon. So all the small intestine is supplied by superior mesenteric artery. All the jejunum and the ileum, sorry, the duodenum part of the duodenum is supplied by the celiac trunk, as we see, as we uh, saw earlier. Lymph node drainage from the small intestine is mostly to the superior mesenteric artery lymph node. Now, how to differentiate between jejunum and ileum? We have in jejunum one of the things that can be used is something called plica circularis. Now, plica circularis, I will show you a picture of it. It's a mucosal folds. Plica circularis can be found in a lot of areas in the in the intestine but it's it, it is very high in concentration and it's very prominent in the jejunum so we you we use it to characterize the jejunum so plica circularis if you see it uh, it can help you to identify that this is the jejunum on the other hand the ileum has a characteristic thing which is called the pyrus patches now the pyrus patches is a submucosal lymph uh, cells aggregate so it's like a lymph node the same concept of a lymph node, but in the wall of the intestine, submucosal actually. And uh, it's, uh, it has a very immunological function and it secretes IgA and it, uh, uh, it has memory cells, etc. So, pyrus patches uh, can also be found in a lot of different areas in the intestine, but it's very high in concentration and it's very obvious in the ileum. So, we use it to characterize the ileum. Now, this is the plica circularis. When you look at this picture, now you're looking at the jejunum. And how did you know that? Because this is the plica circularis. This is a mucosal folds, as you see here. So mucosal folds, plica circularis, link this in your mind to the jejunum. More common in the, and more prominent in the jejunum. On the other hand, if you saw pyrus patches, if you saw lymph node aggregates uh, on histology, you're talking about the ileum. This is important for you because you can be asked about how to differentiate between each segment of the uh, small intestine. Now I will talk about histology in a separate video in the next lectures.
thank you for your attention uh, i'm sorry for any mistakes and please send me your send me your uh, feedback i will put my email in the description box and hit the like and subscribe button because a lot of good materials inshallah will be coming more and more on this channel thank you